some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm going to be starting my new solo series for Earthborn Rangers. Uh, this is one of the newest campaign games that I have gotten. I'm very excited to jump into that. Uh, if you're not familiar with Earthborn Rangers, um, from what I'm gathering, this is kind of a... It's a post-apocalyptic game where, uh, like, like, I mean, where it's like years and years ahead, but it, it gives a lot of, like, a Horizon Zero Dawn kind of vibes where it's like humanity has, like, come together and, and cultivated a sense of harmony with the Earth and... Uh, like, it's, it's very intriguing by its storytelling. I actually have read some of the, uh, of the world of Earthborn Rangers, which there are some games where I get these, and I'm just like, anyway, on the shelf, I'll read it later, and I never do. This one I actually went into to read a little bit. I'm not that far, I think, I'm about halfway. Yeah, I'm on page 44 out of, uh, out of 90, actually. Wow, I am exactly halfway through but basically what this game is is kind of a it's almost like a um, passion project from the designers where yeah humanity uh, the ancestors destroyed the earth and at the very last second before it was completely beyond uh fixing uh, the humans came together, developed what's called, I think, generational projects that were meant to fix the land. And as uh, centuries and centuries went on, this new world has been created. So from my understanding, there is like no overall evil that is like you're not going to be attacking things. You're not going to be uh, like going out and killing things. There's no big bad that's going to be attacking us. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see how this campaign fleshes out um so this is going to be this first episode is going to be the prologue that it recommends that you walk through and i have read the rules watched how the plays uh hell even read the lore book uh, halfway through but we're i always like to show how prologues and tutorials go because uh that's just what i like to do so one caveat with this uh with this series is it is all cards and card games for me are always difficult to want to do run throughs for because they require a lot of text and that means that the way I have my cameras is uh, just unfortunately not going to be able to show it all I mean I'd have to basically do a million different cuts and I mean to be perfectly honest I just don't want to do that but uh, eventually Probably before this campaign is even done, I do plan on getting a uh, like a new camera and a new system to where I can I can you know uh, already have preset zooms and stuff. So hopefully that shows up in the middle of this campaign. But if not, I'm hoping I'm entertaining enough for you to stick around through the rest of the series. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And again. You'll have to deal with me narrating because they don't have foreteller or any type of narration, uh, which makes me sad. Uh, so I already have a little bit started here. Uh, so let's go ahead and go. Um, imagine a low fire burning in the pre-dawn light. Imagine you're wrapped in a warm cloak, breathing cool mountain air. You smell the smoke from the fire and the rich scent of pine. Last night you swore your oaths to the ancestors, to the elders, and to the spirit of the valley. The sun begins to rise on your first day as a ranger, a caretaker of the land, and a friend to its people. You watch as Elder Thrush retrieves her condenser kettle from a low branch, checks the water level, then places it onto the fire. As the water rises to boil, Calypsa, the ranger who has mentored you for the past nine months, sets about crushing dried marrow leaf for tea in plain carbon forged cups. Once it's ready, she hands you a cup. Steam pours off it. It smells of the forest. Calypso raises her cup. To your true self, she drinks, and you follow suit. You eventually pass out because it was roofied. Now, <laughs> the tea invigorates you, warmth spreading throughout your body. It feels amazing. Your eyes are drawn to the flame. As you watch, your eyes unfocus. You hear the voices of your ancestors. You can feel them with you. You can feel their support and their love. 
You hear them speak and they remind you of your best qualities, the person you truly are. Who are you? So I was supposed to uh, begin by choosing an aspect. There are various aspects in the game that you can start with. Um, I have the double card pack for whatever reason, why I did that, I don't know. Maybe I'll need it in the future. But there's a ton of different aspects here, uh, various. So you have four different skills. Uh, awareness, spirit, fitness, and focus. And it even says, if you'd like to be able to hike swiftly through the valley um, or defend yourself, you want high fitness. If you'd like to easily converse and get along with the people of the valley, you want spirit. If you want to be able to adeptly avoid the valley's many dangers, you need awareness. And if you'd like to be able to expertly solve a multitude of problems and handle situations, um, then you should choose focus. So the the one that I chose, and it even says, hey, if you're playing uh, solo, you should choose a fitness of two or higher. Uh, but you can have a fitness of one. Like, so if you have a fitness of one, you could be, you could basically, three's the highest uh, that you can choose, but there's a wide range of different, uh, basically, presets that you can you can build, and I went with, there it is, I went with uh, three fitness, uh, two awareness, two spirit, and one focus. I kind of wanted to go, obviously, more into like, yeah, the fitness, because that's what they recommended, and two, uh, I wanted to kind of be the talker, the charismatic one, and that, unfortunately, has me at a one focus. Then, we went into personalities. There are, again, a bunch of different personalities that you can pick that are centered around the four skill sets. And basically you set them aside for each one and you pick one uh, from each. And so the ones that I chose, I chose thorough, determined, meticulous, persuasive. So those are the four that that I chose for my starting starting deck. Uh, yeah, the four approaches are conflict, connection, exploration, and reason. Those are the four, four, um, where was that? Uh, yeah, the mix of approach icons in your deck will represent your ranger's uh, proclivities. So that's what I went through, and they had a certain number of uh, uh, preliminaries that you needed from your skill set. So... Uh, the only two that I have is actually for my awareness with thorough, but everything else just required one, like determined needed one fitness, meticulous needed one focus, uh, which is all I could take anyway, and then I took persuasive. So, again, wanted to kind of be a little bit more like, yeah, charismatic and uh, very, not action oriented, but thought oriented whenever I interact with things which is, you'd think I would choose high focus, but I didn't. Uh, yes, so then we set up the 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 Ancestor's Grove, which is right here, uh, that has an awareness of one, and then a sun ability that will come up later. It is a perfect day, which is nice, so perfect day that, basically these are just cloud tokens. Then the deck for the forest, because uh, I don't actually know where we start, but um, at least I don't know where we start on the map. And then we have two locations that we set off uh, to the side. And then, let's see. Where are we at? Find the perfect day. Okay. Follow the arrival setup instructions from the back of the Ancestor's Grove card, which it does say read 15, but I don't think we do that right now. It just said search the path deck um, for the next card with a presence of three, which happens to be the only card in that deck with a presence of three, which is this disgusting, uh, horrendous m monster. So that's discarded, uh, which means we won't come up on it. And then it has the lead ranger, which will always be me. I will always be the lead ranger uh, to fund a prey card. And that is the Stitka Buck, which you can see the art right there. And the art for this game is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, very, very cool, like reading the world of Earthborn Rangers is very neat, uh, seeing how they designed certain things, like one thing they talked about was how their items fuse together, like through magnetism, it's a neat, interesting concept. Okay, so after doing all that, 
Your eyes refocus, and Calypso smiles warmly. It is time, she says. As of this morning, I am no longer your mentor. Like you, I am a ranger. She speaks briefly with Elder Thrush, douses the fire, then turns to you. We will travel from here to the Boulder Field. I'll stay back and follow your lead. Your goal this round is to travel from Ancestor's Grove to Boulder Field. If you're unable to do so, that's all right. The pro If you suck, then we will continue. You cannot fail the prologue. All right. So, um, on the common tests, which uh, there's a common test card, you always have four common uh, common tests, which is uh, traverse, connect, remember, and avoid. Um, it says you'll find the traverse test. During this round, you can use this test to place... Uh, these progress tokens onto the um, Ancestor's Grove, because it's basically where we're trying to head. I wonder if I can find us on the map. Um, Ancestor's Grove. So we're trying to head to Lone Tree Station, which, yeah, okay, so Ancestor's Grove. So we are trying to head here, which is, yep, there's that, which means we're probably here. Yeah, because there's Boulder Field and uh, Ancestor's Grove. Cool. All right, so that is the map. Anyway, so, yeah, once there's enough of these tokens on here equal to four, because it's per ranger, so if I was playing two-player, it'd be eight. Uh, that means that we have arrived. So, basically, all the traverse actions that we take will... Um, mean progress towards that based of our based off our success okay so since you're playing on the common test yeah once there's enough progress on the ancestors grove you'll be able to travel to boulder field uh what is the icon yeah okay well i thought we were following that i don't know i guess we are i don't know where we're at it, it looks like we're backtracking now anyway that's not important uh, since you're playing with fewer cards in your deck than normal, it's entirely possible that you might run out of cards in your deck from suffering fatigue uh, before the end of the first round. If this happens, don't end the day like you would. Instead, shuffle your discard pile and fatigue stack into your ranger deck and continue playing. Now play it as a round described on page 12. So basically, um, the round structure is we will draw a path card. Uh, oh wait, at the end of taking turns, stop. Do not move on to the refresh phase. We're going to continue to build your ranger deck before... Uh, we move on to the next round. If you successfully travel to Boulder Field, reshuffle all the woods cards into the path deck and follow the setup instructions for Boulder Field. Then whether you're at Boulder Field or Ancestors Grove, proceed to the next round. So the round structure is basically pretty simple. So we will have a hand of, I believe it is five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Boop. And beginning of the round we always draw a path card so in this case so each card will have an arrow on it that will determine each like lane here determines whether it's within reach on the way or I can't remember what the what the far sight is um but yeah it's within reach on the way or the surroundings. So that's the surroundings up there. Yeah, this is along the way, and this is within reach. These are basically, in a lot of other games, this is like your threat area, like in Arkham Horror card game or Lord of the Rings the card game, that's your threat area. And this is just stuff that's floating out there, dealing, ready to be dealt with. So that's the overgrown thicket, and you get fatigued by, basically, if I wanted to interact with the Ancestor Grove, then I would take... Fatigue, which fatigue means it comes off the top of your deck. It basically burns your deck into a pile that you can't access. Um, from each thing that's a present. So if I'm trying, to, if I'm ignoring this buck to deal in the overgrown thicket to deal with the ancestor grove, I would get fatigued twice. Um, okay. So what I can do, what I am looking for, is actually. A specific deck that I did not grab at the very beginning. Here we go. This should be the deck. I don't think these were doubled. No. So these 
Let me double check, because I want to make sure that I'm not shuffling a shit ton of cards into a modifier deck. Uh, challenge cards, so there should be 24 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 22, 22, 22. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So one thing I didn't set up was the modifier deck, and as far as I can tell, it does not say anything about not having this. Um, yeah, the end of taking turns. So each ranger can take a turn. You can play a card, perform a test, or rest, but I can't play a card, so pretty much I can only take the traverse test because that's all we're doing is all we're doing is walking to the Ancestor's Grove. And it also did not say to ignore the start of a turn, which is drawing a Pathfinder card. So I found an overgrown thicket, which is an obstacle. Obstacles mean that I actually can't deal with that, um, or I can't travel because there's an overgrown thicket in the way. Now I could try and attack through it, like, so there's two different types of ways to overcome things. Uh, the Stitka Buck, for example, has, what, what is it called? Hold on, I'll have to find it in a sec after one more shuffle. Boop. Okay, so there's the modifier deck and the card anatomy for these is, Dang, did I find it? Yes, okay, so eight. Yeah, so that the red is the harm threshold, and then the nine, or in, and that's the progress threshold. So, I could do the progress threshold, which just requires a two. Um, so that's I would just need two of these tokens on that, or I could do the harm threshold. Basically, means that I'm trying to like weave through the overgrown thicket, or I'm trying to hack through it with a three. The Stitka buck is I'm trying to you know. I could, I could harm the Stitka buck uh, enough to get it to not necessarily kill it. As far as I'm aware, there's not like, you're not meant to be killing things, but uh, you wound it enough that it runs off or stress, stress it enough. Okay, so um, there's the overgrown thicket here, which is an obstacle and awareness plus uh, the traverse icon i can hunt for a way through the dense foliage and i can add progress to this feature equal to my effort so that's what i'm gonna do uh i have enough of those to deal with the overgrown thicket so i will need to spend a fitness so that just goes off to the side and the number of things on this attribute is equal to the number of fitness in my energy pool okay so i think i just need two on there so I will play a determined so I this uh, the number of things here is equal to the number of fitness in my energy pool which is which right now is two and I just need uh, I just need to be the one because every challenge is uh, is a default one unless something in brackets says otherwise. So to get through this is just need a one and I can add progress to that equal to my effort. So I could do a meticulous, so I could be very meticulous about the, the thicket and then determine to get through it, um, which would give me a three and even with a minus one would give me a two, which means I get through it. But because I'm dealing with the overgrown thicket and not the Stitka buck, I would actually get fatigued once and that's what i'm gonna do so that will mean that i'm at a three i will do that and then we will draw a progress and because i was doing fitness it's actually a plus one i forgot that i could get a plus one which will then uh mean that i would add four to that and the overgrown thicket is dealt with yay um yeah, uh, the nearby terrain to add things to my injury uh, or location to feature equal to the effort. If I fail, I suffer an injury. I did not fail. Um, and then, so these would just get discarded, which I'll put somewhere. That's in my fatigue. Uh, so that will also discard the overgrown thicket. So that is dealt with very much. Um, 
And then, oh, sorry, that was actually uh, awareness. Yeah, it was an awareness, not fitness. I was thinking of uh, the Traverse, which is what I was actually dealing with the overgrown thicket. So I very much succeeded on that, which means I probably wouldn't have had to play my Meticulous, but that's okay. Then this card has an icon underneath it, which means that every card that's still in play will trigger that. So the Stitka Buck, if there's an active Stitka Doe, uh, the buck charges, which there is not. So, yay! And then this icon on the right of that means that this just gets shuffled back in. All right. So that was a turn. Then we can now, uh, then we can now travel. So, uh, if we had enough progress, which we do not. So, then it says, if you don't have enough cards in your hand, the normalist, you might run out of cards from suffering fatigue before the end of the first round if this happens don't yeah so we wouldn't end the day normally when your deck runs out that means you're actually tired and uh, you would have to end the day in this case i don't do that i just shuffle my fatigue what let's say discard pile yeah into my ranger deck can continue playing after the end of taking turns do not move on to the refresh phase we're going to continue to build your ranger deck before we move on to the next round um yeah. So we're not traveling and we're not doing a refresh. Did it say continue playing? Oh, okay. At the end of taking turns, which uh, that is the end of taking turns. So basically that, that was that. Now we go on. As you walk beneath the shade of a long-limbed oak, you think back to your youth, living and playing in the villages and wild spaces of the valley. A light breeze cools your skin and it conjures a memory of your apprenticeship. You had finished your first day's work, sweat cooling on your skin, overlooking the silver fin, its water sparkling with the colors of sunset. You stood at a moment of promise. Now as a newly sworn ranger, you stand at another, buoyed, buoyed, buoyed by the lessons learned in your youth. Now that you have a sense for how you interact with the game, yeah, one interaction. Um, your, uh, yeah, it's time to choose your background. Your background rep represents the formative years of your ranger's life, where they grew up, their occupation, and how they spent their time before they took on the greater responsibilities in the valley. Find each of the four background cards. So it's artisan, forager, um, shepherd, and traveler. Each background set contains 18 cards, two copies, each of nine unique cards. Place these sets in the center of the play so that all players can see them. I'm the only player because I don't have enough friends. No, this is, uh, I just have way too many campaigns that, with other people, so this one's my own. Okay. Uh, so, the four backgrounds, which I believe are explained in, yes, so backgrounds. Here we are. So, Artisan. You worked as a specialized craft in one of the valley's villages. You are adept in the use of tools and you know how to work with your hands. Uh, they key off uh, and support your equipped gear and the gear of other rangers. Uh, forager. You gain tremendous knowledge of the plants of the valley. You know how to identify the flora of the wilderness, which are medicinal, which are edible, and which are dangerous. Forager cards key off cards with the flora trait, allowing you to use them as a resource in ways that cards from other backgrounds do not. That's really cool. Like, because the obstacle, uh, overgrown thicket, is a flora, so I could might have been able to interact with that different. I'm probably going to go shepherd or traveler. In your early life, for shepherd, you tended a flock of iron wool sheep in the rolling meadows of the southern west, south, southwestern valley. You have a natural affinity for animals, both tame and wild. Shepherd cards typically affect beings that can help you interact with and pacify predators in nonviolent ways. Probably that one, because that just sounds really cool, and you get dog. Um, fun fact, because I'm going to be that guy, <laughs> actually, uh, the iron wool sheep are, like, uh, a species of animal that were, like, from the, I think from, like, the ancestors, or they were the first sheep, uh, animals that the ancestors had that, um, a lot of clothing is made out of because, uh, there's, they figured out how to, um, sh 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 uh, wow, what's the word for it? Shear it? They found out a way to shear it. Anyway, 
or traveler. Your early life was spent walking the footpaths of the valley from village to village or even journeying outside of it. As such, you feel most at home when you're on the move. Traveler cards were moved primarily around making the most of moment cards. Uh, okay. Well, that could be really cool as well, but I really think I'm going to go Shepherd. So, we grab the Shepherd cards, which I have organized horribly because I have them all together. Um, and because maybe I can do some really cool stuff um, with horrific animals. I want to be super nice. And there's and I get a sheepdog. So why would I not go the shepherd route? So there's said there should be nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nice. Uh now that everyone has a set of backgrounds in front of them, take some time to look through the cards in your set to determine which cards you'd like to include in your deck. You'll choose a total of five unique cards. Boo! As you're choosing cards, be sure to check your aspect values. Okay, so any of these that I can't have. I can't have a deeper understanding, because it requires a two focus. And I can have everything else. So I'm definitely getting the dog. Calming presence is probably good, because he's friendly, persistent, and unique. Uh, persistent means that whenever you travel and stuff or have to like shuffle or anything like that, it, it'll actually stay out. So I'm choosing five of these. Um, let's see. I kind of want more animals. So I'm going to get Weary the Sparrowhawk. When you rest, exhaust up to one being for each awareness in your energy pool. Um, one being. Okay. So that is that. Calming Presence, they lose the Predator trait. Before a challenge effect on the attached card will resolve, you may discard two progress from it to cancel the effect. Okay, so we'll do Calming Presence, that's three. Healing Touch, discard one damage, I guess, from a being to add three progress to it. Heal, ooh, okay, so you like heal it. Heal one injury from a Ranger. I'm probably going to get some gear, though. Paratrepis Whistle. Um, you can only equip things. There's like a little, uh, like five boxes that you can only equip a certain amount of those. Um, so when the ranger would suffer an injury from a predator or, a, I'm, I can't remember exactly what these tokens are, but, uh, or d damage would be added to by, by a predator, cancel that effect. Okay. And then... Homeward Bound, move all progress from a being to a feature. That could be pretty good. One eye open when you rest. Oh yeah, exhaust up to one being for each awareness. I'm probably going to keep get the one eye. <coughs> With arms wide open under the sunlight. Welcome to this place. I'll show you everything. With one eye open. Um, okay. Yep. Oh. Well, damn it. <laughs> Probably should have continued reading. Four. Okay. So it says set the others aside. Um, we will revisit them later. All right. Boom. Take your hand, ranger deck, um, and discard, but now your fatigue stack. Didn't it say to shuffle my fatigue stack? Whatever. Um, where was that? And shuffle them together with your chosen background. Place your deck face down again. Okay. You pause to drink some water from your canteen. Uh, vo uh voluminous, voluminous clouds drift lazily overhead. You see Calypso emerge from the trees and walk down the trail towards you. Let's walk together for a while, she says. I need to share some last bits of wisdom with you. It may be some time until our paths cross again out here in the wild. Before you build the rest of your deck, we'll continue playing, this time using only your ranger's personality cards and background cards. Uh, proceed to the refresh phase. Instead of drawing just one card, draw six cards as you would at the beginning of a game. Oh, six cards, not five. Then play the next round as described on page 12 of the rulebook before proceeding to the next up. Uh... Before proceeding to the next step. Okay. So I guess I'm finishing this out. 
Search the valley set for Calypsa Ranger Mentor and put her into play within reach of a ranger. Uh, don't read her campaign entry during this prologue. However, your goal for the round is to clear Calypsa by placing sufficient progress tokens on her. On the common test cards, you'll find the connect test. Try using this test to place progress tokens on Calypsa. Hey, that's what I should be good at. That requires spirit. Okay, so six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. And then was she in here? No, she was not. Uh, I said the ranger... The valley set. With arms wide open. Ah, I think that's this card, this deck. Here she is. She's my girlfriend. Yeah, right there. Cool. And it said, uh, place her within reach. So she is right there. And she's friendly. Attack her. Like, beat her up. Uh, so clear progress or da damage. Uh, read 85, but it says to not read that. Yeah, don't read her campaign entry. Oh, because, yeah, you would read 85 as soon as she came in. So I guess later on I can see her uh, later, and then she might and then interact with her. Ooh! Okay, that was a horrible shuffle, but that's okay. Um, then, when you clear Calypso before you move on to the refresh phase, regardless of whether or not you clear Calypso, read the following. Okay. Yep, so... We will continue. So, I think the first thing I'm going to do is definitely play Oru the Sheepdog, which I can exhaust to move a being and add to uh, progress to it. And I can pet her, uh, my canine companion, to, re to ready it and soothe one fatigue. Which, alright, so I should have one fatigue. Anyway, so playing her... Um, and yeah, so I start by drawing a path card, boop, which is going to be placed ooh, within reach. It's a sunberry bramble. So that's okay. Um, and yeah, so you don't get fatigued by other cards that, like, so if they're, as far as I'm aware, uh, is like, if I'm going to interact with her, I'm not going to get fatigued from these other two. If I was to go interact with the Ancestor's Grove, I'd get four fatigue. Because uh, I'm ignoring her. It's like, yeah, Calypso, I don't care at all what you're saying. Um, she's like, these Sunberry Brambles can save you from uh, dying. They're actually give you immortality and, uh, and vulnerability. And I'm like, I just want to get to the grove. Shut up. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so the Spirit Connect requires a, a heart. Um, and because this is unique, I can't have a second one out because that wouldn't make any sense. Um, so let's go ahead and we are going to use my spirit, which would require one. Oh, it requires two spirit to actually play, um, uh, to play my Oru Sheepdog. Anyway, then we are going to, my hand is not amazing. Uh, yes. So I think... Yeah, we're going to connect, and I will play my other Oru Sheepdog. I'm going to set these off over here. Yeah, so to give me at least one to that, and we will draw. And it is a zero for Spirit uh, to connect, which will um, just put one on her. So... That sucks, because I, yeah, I would say when I clear clips or, or before I move on to the refresh face, regardless of whether or not I cleared her. Yeah, my entire hand was like, it was two Oru Sheepdogs, two Riri the Spar Sparrowhawks, which is not for that. It's for traversing, uh, and then for focusing, and for awareness, which, not super helpful. Um, but, whenever it says move a being, like, move it where? Move 23. 
Yeah, this card is moved to a different area that, than the one in which it currently sits. If an area isn't specified, I can choose to move it either along the way or within reach of a ranger of a choice. Uh, okay, well, then let's go ahead and exhaust Order the Sheepdog, and I'll move her there, and I'll add two progress to it. Yay! Um, so, she's playing fetch with Oru the Sheepdog. How, how nice, which caused her to go with on the way, and as, uh, which I would clear, um, as, as that's getting cleared, I would read 85, but in fact, it's just going to take me to the next, the next thing. And that's kind of a lot of what this game is, is that you are, uh, yeah, I mean, trying to solve as much of what's in front of you as possible. I didn't deal, I mean, I could deal with the Sunberry Bramble. Um, so, like, for example, oh, and I would have had to do that card or that, but there is not an active stick of dough, so I'm not getting charged. But I could still play, so there's three here, here, and here. So I could do, um, I only have one on it, but I could do the, I could pluck the Sunberry Brambles, which uh, would add one damage to this feature and soothe two fatigue. If I fail, this feature fatigues me, um, but I think... I will playing a one-eyed open, so that's going to be two to that, which I need a two, and awareness is a zero. So I actually, this one has plucked two, which means I needed two successes. So the thorn-ringed fruit, uh, so I did on the way, while Calypso was playing with Oru, would add one damage to that, because I harmed it by plucking it. And... That means that I would actually soothe to fatigue, which means I get to put the fatigue card into my hand, which is pretty cool. I like that suffering fatigue or soothing fatigue puts it back in. And I did not fail, but that means that once there's two, meaning that I've, you know, picked whatever uh, food was on there, that uh, it would it would get discarded, which is neat. Anyway, so she would clear, and as I catch up with her and Oru. And that was the last time I went swimming near a Lutrinal Holt. You and Calypso share a laugh. <laughs> she takes the hem of your cloak between her thumb and forefinger and nods solemnly. You are now a ranger of the valley, she says. You are charged with protecting its people and lending aid to any in need. But while you do, take care to look out for each other. Your fellow rangers will need you, and you will need them. Where are they, by the way? It's just me. Clips say you knew that. She steps back and smiles. It's time to return to Lone Tree Station. I must go by a different route, but I will see you there. Return Calypso to the valley set. Okay. That was nice, Calypso. Now that you've had an opportunity to try out some cards from your background set, it's time to choose your specialty. Your ranger specialty represents their recent past and the occupation to which they've dedicated themselves prior to joining the rangers. So there are four specialty sets. Artificer, Conciliator, Explorer, and Shaper. Which are all in here. So, Artificer, part engineer, part visionary artist. Artificers are, yeah, you can't see it, are masterful... Master crafts people dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge. You are a student of the technology of the past, but you are also an innovator, forging the path with the experimental technologies of the current age. Appropriately, artificer cards are primarily gear and attachments, that we tip and are typically a cut above those found elsewhere. And this also gives you a and like a an ability conciliator. Even before you joined the Rangers, you were dedicated to helping the communities of the Valley, aiding anyone in need in matters great and small. As a conciliator, you are a natural med a mediator and protector and share a deep connection with other Valley dwellers. Having spent many years in their company, conciliator cards uh, specialize in connecting with the villagers, protecting them from predators, and navigating the habitated uh, areas of the Valley. So I'm probably just going to pick that, um, just because that makes literally the most sense. Um, Explorer also sounds fun. I mean, you could re literally pick anything. And Shapers are kind of like avatars from what I've gathered. Like, they're really big into, yeah, the elements, um, which also could be super cool. 
Um, I am torn between either Conciliator and Explorer. So, but I am going to go with Conciliator, which what I should be doing, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit just because I'm, because I'm stupid. I am going to actually change my, which I haven't been doing much travel. I'm going to change my thing here because I want to go more into spirit and connecting. So that will still be two awareness, and but three spirit and two fitness and one focus. So uh, nothing changes about my deck, um, except that I can now have one more spirit. Yeah, because I think the the one card that required two of something in my deck um, was actually travel. Where is it? Oh, it was actually awareness. Sorry. So, which I had two awareness anyway. So there is there is that. And like I said, I'm going with conciliator, which. Each but gains 26 cards, two copies each of 12. Place these sets so there's the roll, which I could be exceptional. What did I grab? That wasn't that was artificer. I needed conciliator. Alright, here we are. Which the rolls could be a guardian or voice of the elders, which sounds super lame. Surveyed land. Tranquil tranquil. Tranquil, <laughs> Tranquilist Snare, One with Nature, Follow in Footsteps, Oral Thumper, Tracked. Intention Translator, Safeguard, Neither Sight Sentinel, Ancestral Teachings, Pokodo the Ferret, I think I'm just going to have a lot of pets, and a dear friend. Ooh. Okay. Um, place these sets in the center, yeah. Uh, once all players have chosen their specialty set, place an unchosen sets in the box. Now everyone has a set of specialty cards in front of them. Take some time to look through these and determine which cards you'd like to, you'll choose a total of five unique cards. Um, your roll card sits in front of you next to your aspect card. Uh, does it mention the aspect? Oh, plus two roll cards. Beginning with the last player. Okay. So... Voice or Guardian, I can exhaust or reduce a being's presence to zero until the end of the turn. That's really good, because that basically makes it immediate uh, to deal with. Or Voice of the Elders, spend one energy to add one token to an aid card. So I think I'm going to go with Guardian as my role. Boop. So we're not doing Voice of the Elder, which is okay. And then I'm choosing five of these cards. So what can I not have? So I cannot do the Neither Sight Sentinel or Safeguard. So those are already out. Um, I cannot do Tracked anymore because I do not have a three fitness. And I cannot do one with Nature. But everything else I can do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I need to choose five of these cards. Might as well just put these back um, back in because they are impossible to do right now. All right, dear friend, search the past deck and discard for a human and put them into play with this card attached. When the attached human is cleared, move the progress from it to any number of other beings divided as I choose. That's pretty cool. I'm definitely taking Pokodo the Ferret. Discard one. Uh, progress from this being to add one token to an aid card and to progress to another being. So, let's see. So, probably should take the intention translator. Exhaust, it comes with three charges. When a ranger performs a connect test, commit one effort. So that gives me an extra commit. So that's two. Um, I could go with the Orin, Orlin Thumper. Fitness, use one pulse, strike two with a pulse of connect to add one damage to it being an exhausted. If you fail, discard one uh, progress from that being. If you cannot, it fatigues you instead. Probably, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go damage. Follow in footsteps. After you succeed at a connect test, add progress to a feature equal to your effort. This is in addition to the test standard effect. That sounds pretty good. Um, tranquil snare sounds good as well. Attached to a being. 
reduce the attachment presence. Attach beings presence by one for each snare on this attachment, so I can put multiple. So that'd be four. Survey the land, reduce the attached features presence by one for each marker on this attachment. Potentially ancestral teaching, exhaust a being, then add progress to that being equal to the number of exhausted beings within reach. Yeah, I'll go with that one. I'm gonna go with uh, exhausting a bunch of beings so they basically never get to go. <laughs> I'm gonna be super nice to all animals. Uh, after you be sure to check your aspect value, several cards are required to have at least two or three. Once all players have chosen which cards they would like to include, unchosen cards to the side, along with the unchosen cards from your background set. We'll revisit these shortly. Okay. I'll take those cards back that I couldn't even pretend to use. So, boom. Set those aside with the other ones. I'm actually, like, surprised with the um, amount that's actually in this pr uh, prologue. Uh, so, take your hand, ranger deck, and discard, but now you're fatigued, and shuffle them together. Um, yeah, and oh, it's, there's actually, if you've chosen Shaper as your specialty, you may search your deck for a conduit and equip it. Proceed to the refresh phase instead of drawing this card. Draw six cards as you would at the beginning of a game. Then proceed to the next round of play. Um, regardless of your current location, Ancestors Grove or Boulder Field, your goal this round is to travel to Lone Tree Station. If you are able to travel at the end of a round, travel to Lone Tree Station to complete the prologue. When you travel to Lone Tree Station, read the following. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the refresh, uh, ready all cards, so Oru is ready, and then instead of, yeah, uh, regain all energy, and then, um, then you continue. So instead of drawing one card, I'm drawing six, which I'm not even including my discard pile, and I don't have a fatigue stack because... I ate some Sunberry Bramble. It was very nice. I imagine those things, uh, so you have to prick off all the, the thorns. Like, uh, once you prick those off, you crack it open. Inside there is a very viscous liquid, almost like an egg. And, uh, but it tastes like lemon, so they're very sour. I'm making all this up. That's not in the world of Earthborn that I'm aware of. Maybe I'm not there yet. Maybe they specifically talk about the Sunberry Bramble. If they don't, I'm going to be in very disappointed. If there's not a description of every single thing in the world, then you don't have the rights to call it the world of Earthborn Rangers. Alright, hopefully that's shuffled enough now. So, my build is a... Uh, high spirit, medium awareness and fitness and low focus. Uh, I am a guardian conciliator shepherd. I didn't even touch those two decks. Uh, okay, so ready your current, regardless of your current location, your goal is to travel to Lone Tree Station. So I'm guessing that that's gone and I put in Lone Tree Station. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna, that is what I'm gonna guess here. I don't know why I keep shuffling because it's like, it's, all right, I just like doing it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. There we go. There we go. There is a better hand. So, um, yeah, arrival setup, search the path deck for the next predator and discard it. Okay. Hey, Lone Tree Station. So for the next predator, that's prey. Nope. Prey. Nope. Predator. So, yeah, because Lone Tree Station is the um, hub for the rangers uh, that I, if I remember right, 
because I did read about, I read about Lone Tree Station just now and White Sky, which are both, actually, so we, I guess we went, yeah, we were trying to travel to Ancestors Grove, uh, and then there's Boulder Field, so we were somewhere, we're heading to one of those, and then we're in the, yeah, we have that type of deck, the forest deck, and we're traveling to Lone Tree Station. I've read about that, and I've read about White Sky and the Northern Outpost. Um, Spire is like the big, um, that's like the central hub of everything, but Lone Tree Station, it's actually, you can see a picture of it in the book it's very cool looking yeah there we go right right there it's built in the massive tree uh yes the base of operations for the rangers <laughs> i remembered all right so then it said to start over um Travel to Lone Tree Station, which just requires three. If you're able to travel at the end of a round, travel to Lone Tree Station to complete the prologue. All right, so we're going to draw the next card. It's another Stitka buck. Oh, a lot of deer in the forest. Who would have thought? And still some Sunberry, Sunberry Bramble. Okay, a deer require quite a bit to deal with. Um, actually, so... What I will do is I think I am going to try and um, connect with the Stitka buck. Do I, did I get a attached to a predator? So they are not. Um, I could have my Reary, the Sparrowhawk, uh, attack, but I don't really want to do that. I could survey, which allows me to draw another path card if I wanted to. Thorough helps with awareness, um, so I could avoid to notice, uh, to exhaust, that helps me exhaust them. That's not horrible either, so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to do a common test, which one thing I need to remember is if I perform a test, which is on page 12, um... There are the four common tests. So on your turn, you can choose to, uh, yep, perform a test on page 16. Choose a test, then choose the other cards to interact with, then each ready card between you and the card. Um, this is explained, yep, on fatiguing. Test can succeed or fail. Yeah, I must first commit one or more energy tokens. That's right, okay. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Play. I'm going to do an awareness, which requires me to exhaust one uh, aware, so that I'm committing one, and then I'm going to play thorough, which gives me two more to that, uh, to try and avoid one of the Stitka bucks. So, that is a three. Um... Yeah, so it's a three, which uh, which is awareness. I actually did. So that is a three, which is I get to avoid to ex execute to the presence of the card uh, with which I'm interacting with. So the presence is one. So yeah, very not. I'm very meticulously ignoring that. Uh, and then I am going to go after this Stitka buck, and I'm going to exhaust. Let me double check one thing. Where are we? Number six. Yeah, the presence. Okay. So, I am now going to exhaust this to make this presence zero. And then I can't do anything about that. I mean, I could just try and pluck it to get rid of fatigue, but I'm not getting any fatigue. So now I'm finally going to travel uh, to Lone Tree Station, or I'm going to get yeah, Traverse there, which I only have... Um, I only have... Oh, no, I have two. I have two cards. I have Meticulous and Riri. Um, but Travel is Fitness, so let's go with two on there. I only need three... So I'm going to play these two on this. So that's going to be 
four. Oh, I would have had to do the mountain on here as well. If there's an active predator exhausted, there is not. So what's cool about this is if there was a predator within reach, uh, the predator would have been exhausted, but two damage would have been done to the stick of butt because it's getting attacked. So a lot of the cards where the, the tests can cause them to interact with each other. Uh, but there is one here if there's an active prey exhausted. So actually, there's that, so I didn't even need to exhaust myself. Um, add a progress to it and a damage to this feature, um, both equal to that prey's presence, uh, which is just one, but that will actually cause this Sunberry Bramble to get discarded because uh, there's no more. So the prey was actively uh, eating on that. So with that, as I avoid this deer and as this deer goes to eat the Bramble, I'm going to, oh, and then if this test added um, oh yeah, refresh, discard one cloud from this card. If there are no clouds remaining, flip this. If this test added, if this test added progress, add one additional progress uh, to it. Oh, because it's a perfect day. I should probably read the weather card. Um, but I think one cloud is now gone because we've done one refresh because we've basically been ignoring everything else. Anyway, now I'm going to Lone Tree Station. Uh, been a very nice, warm walk through the forest. I have now two, three, four, two this. Uh, and the fitness was a plus one. So that's five, which I add five progress to a location equal to my effort. So three, four, five. Yeah, it was basically... Oh, and... Oh, the mountain doesn't here, uh, appear here. It was the red which these are exhausted, so it actually doesn't matter, but then these will get shuffled. Um, and then I, after I do my turn, which I am done, I can choose to travel, which is the Lone Tree Station because there is enough progress on there equal to the number of rangers uh so now i will go and travel to the lone tree station you emerge from a line of trees and find yourself walking through a vast rolling field in the distance you see the towering form of lone tree station rising against the clear blue sky and on the breeze you smell the hint of something sweet is someone baking the prologue is nearly complete. Take some time to tidy up the play area, gather my deck, discard pile, fatigue stack, and hand uh, into my ranger deck and set it aside. Okie dokie. That was nice. Uh, gather the path cards and return them to their sets. So, the forest set. All that. It's going to get returned to the set, which this, yeah, like I said, this was the forest. Um, yeah, I don't think that's weather, so this was back here. Yeah, the woods. Woo. Let's put that in there. It's time to conclude the deck building by choosing my ranger's outside interest. Usually you choose your outside interest from the entire starting card pool, but for the prologue, we'll narrow it down a bit so it's not such an intimidating choice. If you're playing solo, you can skip the next step and choose your outside interest from the starting card pool, or you can choose one of the suggested outside interests list on page 33. Um, look through the cards from your chosen background and specialty set that you did not include in your deck. Choose two of those cards that you think might be helpful to the group and place them in the center of the table. If someone in the group is playing as a shaper, okay, beginning with the lead ranger, choose one card from those in the center and place them in front of you. Then the next player to the left does the same once all cards have been chosen, their outside interest, add those cards to your deck and return the remaining cards from your background and special sets to the box. Now that you've played a bit, if you'd like to make different choices from your ranger deck, you may do so now, which I did with my thing. That's really cool. You're now ready to begin the Lore of the Valley campaign to begin read entry one, missions below. Missions below! Um, oh, okay, so you can kind of pick something to where it starts the deck building aspect of different, uh, different sets. Neat. If I'm playing solo, I may skip the next step and choose my outside interest from the starting card pool. Um, and it was between background and specialty. Choose two of those cards, both copies of each that you think might be helpful to the group. And then choose one card, both copies from those in the center. So... 
Okay, so it's like, so I'm choosing basically two cards. Well, probably still fulfilling the uh, prerequisites of your thing. So, well, I did want to go more into... So that's, that's why these come back in. So I could pick more of these, but I, I already can't really choose those, and I already chose my own set, so it wouldn't make sense. It's not an outside interest for my own my own set. Uh, hmm, you know what I'd like to choose? What I'm already doing. I did want to go a little bit more into Explorer. So, with Specialty, I could... <laughs> a Leaf in the Breeze, uh, when you traverse dodge up to three cards. Um, that's not horrible. Uh, Hydrolins, Goggles, Share in the Valley Secrets, can't do. Uh, what do they have for Spirit? What's a three spirit? Cradled by the earth, choose a trail, soothe fatigue, equal to number of progress on that trail. Uh, okay. Not amazing. Breathe into it when you perform a test, discard any number of cards from your fatigue stack to commit one effort to that test for every two cards. That's pretty rough. Uh, or walk with me. After you succeed at a traverse test, add progress to the being equal to your effort. This is in addition to the, after you succeed at the traverse, oh, okay. Let's see. Field journal, when you rest, add entries equal to the number of focus in your energy pool. Okay, that's not great. <laughs> that's only one. When a ranger scouts, increase the number of cards scouted by one. Okay. I uh, don't have three fatigue. Orland hiking stave, exhaust, uh, use one stride, add one progress to a trail, or I can strike out. No, I don't want to injure anyone. Boundary Sensor, when a ranger performs the Traverse Test, commit one effort. That's pretty good. That's, that's, that's pretty good, right? Because I have something that, yeah, with my Intention Translator, I don't have much gear. Uh, my Intention Translator is two. My Companions, oh, my Whistle's one, which is all I have, and my Companions don't add any, anything like that. So I could do a Boundary Sensor with one Fatigue. That would just help me traverse more yeah why not sure i'm not gonna give it too much thought so i'm gonna grab two boundary sensors for explorer that's probably a good explorer beginning thing They're like all right you want to be an explorer kid here's something that makes it uh, insanely easy so yeah that will get shuffled into my deck and that is the prologue so the prologue uh, went off without a hitch. It did exactly what I expected it to. And then to actually start the campaign, uh, I will read I from the first four steps of setup on page 10. Then return here for the remainder of setup where we get to learn about missions, which is obviously the driving force of the game. All right. But that is that, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Stick around for the rest of the series. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.